16 hard drives, proper server HBA, laptop. Hear me out, for as many reasons as this doesn't make any sense, there's reasons why it's genius. Think of the efficiency here. A highly efficient desktop computer like an old Dell Optiplex, that's gonna use like 50 watts at idle. A laptop, that's gonna sit at like 15, 20 watts. And then like, oh, you need to interact with your server console? You've already got a monitor and keyboard ready to go. Unlike with a desktop where you're gonna have to plug that stuff in every time. Now, obviously it's gonna be less power efficient when there's 16 drives spinning, but I think it's, it's, it's definitely still gonna be better, right? Because the CPU is using less power. Obvious problem here, elephant in the room you might say, this laptop has a total of two SATA ports and there's not exactly a convenient way to plug in a server grade HPA. Except that there is. AliExpress adapters. You take your server grade HPA, plug it into this, run it over a USB cable with a separate power supply, and then we have two choices. We're gonna try Express card and also mini PCIe, like a Wi-Fi card slot. Whichever one works better, if any of them work. I'm gonna start plugging in hard drives to this laptop and see how many I can get working. All that should be required is a lot of SATA cables. Seriously, a lot of SATA cables. All of the SATA power cables are plugged in. This card has four of whatever this connector is, and then that turns into 16 individual SATA cables. Those are all gonna plug into all of those drives. And there is all of the data lines all going through these cables into the HBA. These drives do need to be powered through these cables as well as the HBA needs a power cable. Hello, $10 computer. I'll be taking that. And I think everything here is ready. It's all plugged in. I've switched to this laptop because it's more powerful than that ThinkPad was. I just have to hit the switch on this power supply and see if hard drives show up on the computer. Let's press it, here we go. Oh, stuff is happening, look at task manager. Disk zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Why is there only eight? That's more than eight drives. Something is broken. I tested this with the ThinkPad and everything worked. Now half the drives just aren't showing up. I have a theory that plugging in all of the drives at once is too much of a surge and that's just making stuff not work. So I'm gonna try plugging in one row at a time. Start with these ones. Absolutely nothing changed on the computer. Now, zero drives show up. I'm gonna unplug this. I'm suspicious something's going on with this PCIe connection. Oh, that was very not plugged in all the way, okay. So this card actually has two separate controllers that each do eight drives. I think because this wasn't plugged in all the way, only one of them was actually getting connected. I'm gonna plug this back in. It's still only eight. Why is it still only eight? Will this magically work if I switch back to the ThinkPad? That is my thought process right now because I'm only getting eight drives. I tested it with the ThinkPad before and it had 16 showing up. Let's just go back. ThinkPad Express Card Port. Let's try you. Disk drives. Currently we have one SSD. Oh, is that eight again? Certainly not 16. Oh, there they are. There's the other half. This might actually be working. This is totally working. Okay, apparently if you use a ThinkPad, it just works. Storage controllers, Avago adapter, Fury store port, two of them, the two halves of this card, and all my disk drives. They just show up now and work. There's all my drives showing up in disk management. All of the desktop 500 gig drives are in one pool, and all of the laptop 700 gig drives are in a separate one for two pools with seven terabytes and three terabytes. Everything's actually connected and working. Time to find out if we have any reasonable amount of bandwidth to this array of drives. I'm gonna run Crystal Disk Mark and see if we get reasonable performance. Okay, 400 megabytes per second, that's not that bad. I think I just heard a drive die. They're all making clicking sounds. I'm like 80% sure that's power related and you should not run this many SATA power splitters. That's, that's probably bad. Anyways, 400 megabytes per second. That is reasonable. I think the theoretical limit of this interface is supposed to be 500, and that's pretty close. Since the plan is for this to be some kind of NAS, all that matters is that these numbers are above 125 megabytes per second, because that will saturate a gigabit ethernet jack. Current power efficiency with this setup, the laptop is drawing 34 watts, although the battery is charging. Once that fully charges, it's gonna be less. And the hard drives, Everything that's happening here with the card and all the drives, 82 watts. 
We're using three times the amount of power as the computer to spin these drives and power this car. Grand total altogether, that's like 110 watts. I guess it's time to ditch Windows here and see if I can run TrueNAS and make an actual NAS setup with this. With redundancy, because this is very sketchy currently. I'm kind of curious now, can we go full awful here and use an X201? Will this connect to all the drives? I kind of forgot this has Windows XP on it. I'm just gonna plug this in anyway. I guess I should have expected this being Windows XP and all. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll have to try a newer operating system. The Avago Technologies BIOS thing, that's all the drives. Oh no, HDD zero initialization error. New plan, I've unplugged the drives, Windows is booting off the SSD very slowly. This, this computer's kind of, kind of old. Great resolution options. We got 1280 by 720, sure. Notably though, uh, no disk drives or anything, nothing showing up from this setup. Unplug the express card. Plug the express card back in. Is this working right now? Avago adapter, Fury store port. Disk drives, that is, that's not eight, that is 16 disk drives. So why didn't the Dell work then? This ancient X201 has no business working for this. Just to recap here, that Dell had a third generation proper quad core eight thread CPU. Like it was as powerful as the $10 computer was, the desktop one. This thing is a mobile Core i5, first generation, the first one. And there's our task manager with drives from zero all the way up to 16 and our gigabit network connection. These were just like school laptops. I'm honestly surprised that these things even had gigabit ethernet, let alone like the, the, the port is compatible with this. It's also kind of nice that everything is on one side. Nothing there, nothing on the back. We've got power, VGA to HDMI, our USB to power this, our gigabit ethernet, and our PCI Express over USB to this mess. I think we have to use this now. How could I not use the X201 now? So I got TrueNAS installed and it is working, but there's now a specific boot up procedure you have to go through. I don't know why this happens, but if you try to boot the X201 with the card plugged in, the Avago BIOS thing comes up and then it gives an error and it will never actually boot. The slightly sketchy, but technically functional solution for this, you have to unplug the PCIe interface, boot up the computer until it gets to the grub screen, plug the interface back in, and then boot the operating system. And then it works. I'm on the web UI here. You can see that the CPU is the M540 of the X201, four gigs of RAM showing up, and our hard drives. Six 500 gig drives, nine 700 gig drives, and one one terabyte drive. Let's call this Sketch Laptop Pool, because this is the one that's gonna use the laptop hard drives. Layout, I'm gonna go for RAID Z2, so we'll have whatever amount of data, and then two drives for redundancy, or parity data, whatever you wanna call it. Disk size, 700 gigabytes. That's the laptop drives with a width of 10, so that's all 10 drives. Don't need spares, don't need a cache, don't need metadata. Honestly, I think we're done here. Estimated usable raw capacity, 5.5 tibby bytes. Let's create the pool. The clicking. I can't get over the clicking. There's no way that that is a healthy sound for running drives. Time to create a share, Windows SMB share. Yes, run that on the laptop drive. Now I've mapped my network shares in Windows and there they are, five terabyte share and two terabyte share. Both accessible, ready to be used for storing whatever data you put on this. Hopefully not something important. This really is just like an actual functional NAS at this point. It may be spread out on a desk running off a terrible ThinkPad X201, but like, I just started a file transfer and it copies files like a NAS. It should probably have an enclosure. Like, can we just put this all in a box? Like make a nice JBOD and then have the cable go into the laptop? That would be super cool. We might not end up needing that enclosure. I've just tried copying files to this thing. I've got about 900 gigabytes transferred over. Both of the pools are already failing. Laptop pool, status degraded, that can't be good. Desktop pool, status unhealthy, disks with errors, one of six. If I go through and look at my storage tab, the laptop pool straight up has a dead drive. One of these things has failed. 
in the 30 minutes that this server has existed for. Uh, pool status is degraded and this drive just straight up doesn't appear anymore. And then we move over to our desktop pool. I don't know if this is less bad or if this is more bad, but if I click on this one, all the drives still show up, but this one has nine errors. Oh, that's new. This one has three errors. That wasn't there before. I don't know how to figure out what these errors are. I just know that they exist. Oh, disk is unavailable. Did this one die? Who would have guessed that this setup here is not 100% reliable? Yeah, th th that was expected. Maybe using hard drives from people's old laptops that they've discarded and have a decade of usage on them was not a great idea. Do we continue at this point? I don't know. I'm just going to turn off the server, turn off the drives and see if I can turn them back on and they'll show up again. Or if they're just broken. Desktop pool has encountered an uncorrectable IO failure and has been suspended. That is back online and in our web interface, our pools still exist and all of the drives are back. I guess this is the drive that disappeared because this is the only one that had a higher capacity and that's the one that wasn't showing up. Yeah, storage health, good on both of our arrays. It says everything is fine. Thanks, TrueNAS. Very reassuring. I'm sure this will not ever break again in the future. Because the disc was gone and now it's come back though, it does have to do this re-silvering process, which apparently takes four hours. I, I guess I don't have a choice. I just have to wait for that and see if the drives fail again in the meantime. We are kind of seeing the magic of a system like TrueNAS here. That drive was dead according to the system, not there at all. And yet the file copy I was doing to this server never interrupted. Now that the drive is back, it's doing the resilvering and it's gonna fix everything and go back to the way it was before. That is why you use parity drives on a server like this. If I didn't have those two parity drives, the entire array would be dead and all the data would be gone. So this is the redundancy system working as intended to save my data here. It's just, it would be a lot better if it didn't have to do this. Because that now I don't know if my drives are dead or not. I didn't actually change the drives. The one that just disappeared is just working again. And there's no errors. My hope for this setup turning into an actual NAS that I can use is dying at an exponential rate. We got read errors, we got write errors, we got check some errors. Now tell me why I refreshed my storage page and now every single drive has errors. 52, 54, all of them are in the 50s. Except for the ones that are more than that. It's been about eight minutes. Every single drive now has over 9,300 errors. My question is, how is it possible that this Samba share still works? I can still go to my media files on here. Like, can I play these? Does that work? Open this video. What is this? No, that doesn't work at all. I think my, my data is uh, lost here. All right, let's unplug this. Goodbye, laptop Naz. I feel like I'm too far into this to give up at this point. I wanna find out if it's the laptop through the adapter problem that's making this terrible. What if I set up all these terrible old hard drives on a desktop? Will it function then? New plan, can I fit all of these hard drives and the eight port HBA into a small form factor Dell Optiplex? Won't be needing an optical drive. This cage is just taking up space. We put our hard drives here. HBA can go right there. I would imagine we probably don't need this either. That's probably fine. Introducing storage brick with all the power wires. That kind of almost looks like it could fit in there. Oh, I'm gonna break these SATA cables. You know, that's probably fine. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work. Well, that's a bit better. I don't think that this computer actually has integrated graphics despite the video ports there because these things did come with graphics cards. I don't think I can plug a monitor into this without a GPU. And that's not fitting in there. I don't think so. Don't ask me how I did this. I don't know. I actually have no idea. First attempt, turning on the server I'm going to call Peak Density. TrueNAS, yes! No way this works. Look at the state these SATA cables are crushed into to fit around there. That's definitely not how you want to be doing this, let alone like vibration, dampening, mounting, hard drives or whatever. I'm sure that they love this. 
This may actually be working. The server is booted up using this computer and you can see in the web interface, our CPU is now one that is a lot better because it's that one. And our RAM is now 16 gigabytes instead of four. I've also changed my host name to density because of the state of that thing. It's dense. And there is scary share on slash slash density, the new server. Let's load some stuff on here. And we can finally find out if this still works after I close this lid. All right, it's done, it's closed. Completed server. We do have less capacity not having those desktop hard drives in here, but we're also better on efficiency. This entire setup is running with all the drives spinning and the entire thing is only using 48 watts. The old system was up at 110. 17 hours and one minute that this server has now been running without any issues. I think there's two possible conclusions for the laptop based NAS. Number one, the interface between the laptop and the HBA, that weird AliExpress adapter, was causing all the problems. I think that's very likely. Number two possibility, it could have been the power supply setup. I don't know, maybe it was like not getting enough power because all the hard drives. I don't know, that's possible. Regardless of what the problem actually was, it was clear that that setup was a bad idea and was not stable at all. I think it's possible that a different adapter setup to connect the HBA to the laptop could have made improvements to the stability. That being said though, there were not really a lot of advantages to using the laptop in the first place. The efficiency was really not all that much better than a desktop. The laptop used like 25 watts the whole time. I think that these desktops, without all the hard drives in them, will use like 35. Technically, the desktop CPU motherboard setup is less efficient than the laptop, but by like 10 watts, and what you're gaining there is way, way more power. Seriously, like multiple times the amount of processing power. As for this version of the NAS in its current form, I intend on leaving it exactly like this. I wanna see how long those hard drives last. I was able to load a terabyte worth of data onto here and all of it just kinda of works. All of these video files here are being stored on this server and I can open them, they play, I can put them in DaVinci Resolve and edit them. Everything just works as intended. So that's pretty much it for this thing. I'm gonna leave it like this, plug it into ethernet somewhere and back up some files to it, see how long those hard drives can last. The laptop setup through the adapters with the ThinkPad was, was bad. Probably don't do that, it was unreliable. If you found this project interesting, get subscribed, watch my other videos and come back next week. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.